Here with me now on the set is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General and Fox News contributor Keith Kellogg. General, welcome. Good to be with you, Mike. Great to have you. So this is the city that Jeff was talking about in right. his report where the Ukrainians are assessing uh, the atrocities perhaps committed there. What's your assessment of the war right now? The blue areas where the Ukrainians are surging, the red areas where the Russians are, are advancing. Yeah, let's give real credit to the Ukrainians when they're, they're fight here on the Azum, because what they've done, they've actually pushed here very, very hard uh, and forced the Russians back. Now, the Russians began a, a withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Then it became a retrograde, and it's actually becoming into a rout, and they forced those forces out. And the reason why this city is so important is that's a real rail hub. That's a real logistical area. Now, the reason this really happened is they actually started thinning the lines here because the Russians thought, well, we've got this pretty well under control because they wanted to go to the south. And if we go to the next map, I'll show you what we're talking about. Because the next, the fight that's going to occur, and I think the Russians see that as well, is the real fight's going to be here around Kherson. Mm -hmm. Because that's the gateway to Crimea. And this is where the Ukrainians started their offensive a, a, a few weeks ago, pushing this way towards, towards Crimea. Because what Zelensky is thinking really hard about is he said recently, this war began, he's talking about 2014 with Crimea. The war began in Crimea, it's going to end in Crimea. Mm -hmm. He wants to cut Crimea off and basically take Crimea, and that would be a major a strategic defeat for the Russian army. The Russian army falls, the professional army falls if they're able to take that and go to, and take Crimea. So there's a huge fight here. They thin the Russians thin their lines. They moved about 20 battalion tactical groups down here. That's about 15 to 20,000 troops because they thought this was okay up in the north. It wasn't, and now they're fighting down here. We know Putin's wanted a land bridge from Russia right. to the ports, right? Yeah, right? And so seeing these blue areas, um, what does that do to Ukrainian troops who have been fighting for their homeland? Well, this, this is really existential fight for them. They want to win this fight because they believe they win this fight. They've defeated the Russian army. They have. If, they can, if they're able to do that. And that's what Zelensky made that comment about Crimea. But it, it, Putin made an interesting comment just recently. He said, well, that's, you know, they're just fighting our professional army. He's thinking hard probably about mobilization. Mm -hmm. Well, if you defeat their professional army of about 300,000, they've probably killed or wounded well as 70 to, 80, 70 to 80 thousand, about one third of the invasion force. That means they're they're breaking the back of the Russian army. It's fascinating to watch this. It's being really helped by American weapons. Our MLRS, the high Mars, that we've given them has helped. I wish we would give them more. Today was a report on the New York Times that we haven't given them everything they've asked for. I don't know why we haven't. We're an action. We're, we are a party to this conflict. And we should give them what they really need. So, um, policymakers who may be watching, um, your advice to them is to give them everything they're asking for because this is a critical stage in the conflict. Yeah, well, they didn't start the fight, Mike. You know, what's happened is the Russians started the fight, and it's and it's a. It, they're a democratic nation. It's an existential fight for them, and we should give them everything they want. For example, we've got an MLRS brigade in Europe right now. It's got two battalions in it. We should give them all that equipment. We should give them the aircraft that they've originally wanted. Really pour it on, because I think we have a vested interest, and we are part of the conflict. Because I'm not saying anything about the political side of it with Putin, but break the back of the Russian army, send them back to Russia. Then the, I think what's happened, if that happened for, for Putin, I think I would double up on my food tasters, because if he loses this fight, I think that and he's gone. So what about that? What about his, the, th the threat to him, to his future mm -hmm. leadership of Russia? Well, my, my concern, and in fact, President Biden made a comment about it. I wish he kind of hadn't talked about it. But so the next question is, what does Putin do? Mm -hmm. And Putin is going to have to mobilize probably more troops to win this fight if he really wants to. And he looks at it as a major fight as well. So he, he sees it as an existential fight. And this whole concept and concern about nuclear weapons will always rise, because they look at it much differently than we do. They call them non-strategic nuclear weapons tactical nuclear weapons. They've got about 2,000 of them. And these things are small nuclear weapons, 1 KT, blast range of about five miles. It's not a, a city killer. But they could use something like that. If they do that, it changes everything, the, the, the makeup of how we fight nuclear war into the future, because now we've brought, broken the nuclear threshold that hasn't been broken since 1945. But it's in their doctrine. And part of their doctrine is escalate to de-escalate. Right. And if they want to use it, that could change. Could they use it with a demonstration? And what I mean by a demonstration, that's actually a real term, where you put it somewhere where it's not going to really damage very much, but psychologically it sends a signal. So he's got that in his back pocket because they do that. They plan for that. It's in their strategy. Very interesting. Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, thank you so much Thanks, for your time. Mike. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to have you.